Okay, Assalamualaikum and a very good day to all. Okay, welcome to our class. So for today, we're going to learn on design pattern. Okay, class. So what is basically a design pattern? Okay, before we dive into the definitions and all those things, just take a step back and we just um, revisit on the process of uh, developing a software. Okay, basically, why we, de we develop a software? Basically, it's to help us um, to ease our work or we want to improve the current process from um, conventional with uh, paper base and all those things into a more paperless uh, structure and behavior by using a software system. So basically, um, when, we say, when we say design pattern, okay, it represents a solution towards problem that we face in developing a software within a particular context. Okay, for instance, we take a situation. Let's say um, we want to develop uh, a student management system. So the problem with current student management system is um, is being done conventionally. That means the process is done conventionally. So the problem is when there are too many data, too many student particulars, how we want to manage them. So in that context, from the context of that's the problem, and in the context of a student uh, who is being managed by the system admin, how he looks for a potential solution to solve the problem that he faces. So therefore, design pattern is actually a flexible solution in which we try to implement an existing solution or also we can call as a template solution on the particular problem. And then we try to uh, modify the solution based on the problem and the context. So uh, design pattern, it captures the static and the dynamic structure of the uh, collaboration from the key participants which are the stakeholders and also um, if you remember the existing systems or the existing solutions that has been implemented and then try to modify all those things into a better software uh, development that means in terms of how we develop and also the proposed solution okay design patterns also um, it's in, in a way, it benefits the software developers since we can reuse all the successful software architecture and the design that are available. But we can modify them based on the problem and the context that we are facing. So class, an example of design pattern is uh, object-oriented design pattern. I think the concepts uh, and all of it, I won't go through here as you already went through your object-oriented programming subjects. But nevertheless, let's say we want to develop a software, okay, and we want to utilize this con uh, this concept, which is object-oriented, okay. We will consider all the elements which uh, are involved with object-oriented, and we try to as much as possible uh, to solve our design problems using object-oriented. So. Um, Let's say this uh, concept has been applied in another system. So, in a way, we can use this, this design pattern in another project or another problem and context. Therefore, the advantage of using uh, object-oriented is we can reuse back the designs. We can extend. That means, let's say we have objects, let's say 10 objects. In the new system or new pro, new system development, we want to create 15 objects. That more. Therefore, we can extend the objects and also the attributes. And we also use uh, can use object-oriented as a modular. That means for one module, we can create 10 objects and then link that 10 objects with other module that has five objects. So that's based on the modular. And based on the performance, it's far more better since uh, we are not rewriting each object again and again, but we ex uh, we try to assess the existing object so that we reduce the memory concern, memory consume. So this is one advantage of uh, using a design pattern, which is uh, the OO design pattern. Okay, class. So coming to the types of design pattern, so it can be divided into four. 
Okay, the first is creational patterns in which we are creating um, classes and also objects uh, based on the problem and the context that we are dealing with. The second one is structural pattern. That means we are more focusing on the um, the intermediate or middleware of between classes and objects. And also, we know another known as behavioral patterns in which we'll see the dynamic interaction between the um, classes or objects. And then finally is the one that I mentioned before, which is J2EE patterns, or also known as object-oriented patterns, in which we are more concerned on the creation of the objects at the presentation layer. Okay, class. When you say creational pattern, we try to create um, objects or elements in order to solve the um, design problem. So these are the samples of the creational pattern. So I will explain the prototype. In which prototype is a factory or for cloning new instances from a prototype. For instance, let's say we have one system that is uh, mimically um, solving the almost the same problem as the new uh, new problem of the software that is being developed. So we try to clone from the existing um, system, the interface or whatsoever, the objects to the new system. So we actually cloning from the existing prototype to another prototype. So that is an example of uh, prototyping. That means the instance also known as factory, we try to clone as much as possible from the existing prototype to the um, new prototype based on the similarity, um, similar objects or classes. So class, um, the second pattern, which is the structural patterns. Okay, these are the examples, which are adapter, bridge, composite, decorator, and flyweight. Just an example regarding on the flyweight. Okay, for flyweight, uh, we mentioned many fine grains objection efficiently. Efficiently. So how we say efficiently? Okay, for, inst for instance, uh, many of you has done online purchasing, hopefully. Um, for instance, let's say uh, we take Shopee. Okay, so when we are buying or seeing things, okay, when we want to add our uh, potential um, items that we want to buy, usually we have the add to cart functions, right? Okay, when we add something, um, let's say we add a few items, let's say bags, shirts, pants, and all these things. So these things will be stored in a memory until uh, we want to uh, make the uh, payment so when using this card okay when you store in the memory okay this information that is stored in memory is actually takes up the space um, of the memory in memory of the cloud so therefore um, if you have a lot of objects going through at one time so it might cause um, the system to slow down or the cloud server to slow down so by implementing the flyweight okay it actually reduces the use of memory by creating a better structured object so that um, it won't um, what do you say it's not uh, it won't use a lot of memory but instead it optimizes the amount of memory used when the objects being added let's say in this based on the categories so let's say there are three objects in one category so it will create um, an object with that category but with more reduced uh, memory usage so that's one way of um, reducing the memory problem in cloud-based computing for um, the functions of add to cart in an online system. So this is one way we are modifying the structure of the um, existing uh, software or cloud uh, computing uh, softwares in which we actually modify a little bit on the structure so that we can hold a lot of information but without compromising the amount of memory. So class, the last uh, type of design pattern, which is the behavioral pattern, in which it involves the behavior of the class of the object. Okay, there are, here are some of the examples, which are interpreter, iterator, strategy, observer, or state. But um, just one example of, let's say, strategy. Okay, it's abstraction of selecting one of any algorithms. 
So basically, we have some algorithms that can be implemented in the system, but um, we have to strategize on which algorithm actually uh, solves the problem in a minimal way without affecting much on the uh, performance and also the uh, memory. So therefore, we have to strategize on the selection of algorithm in which for that particular context, we choose the most um, potential algorithm that can have an optimal solution based on the performance and also memory and also may include on uh, time in which how fast it solves the problem. So that's all for today's uh, topic. Um, I hope you understood. So see you again um, in our next lecture. Thank you.